Allende and Williamson. Come on, John. Vámonos. Date prisa, cabrón. Come on, John. Let's get to the horses. I thought you were done.
lucha como un hombre cabrón. ¡Estás acabado, Allende! ¡Los rebeldes han ganado! ¡Nuevo paraíso es mío! ¡No vas a salir con la tuya, hijo de puta! ¡No hay salida, Allende! ¡Lucha como un hombre, cabrón! ¡Estás acabado, Allende!
a salir con la tuya, hijo de puta. What the hell are you doing? Find my freedom, pendejo. Now shut up, you dumb ape. And get out of the wagon. Apurate! I'm coming out! Don't shoot! Here. Take Williamson. Just let me live. I will leave the country, I promise. You always was weak-minded. You're the one who let Dutch drive you insane! 
Dutch wanted you dead. We all did. Well, I'm going after him next. I'll outlive all of you. Agenda is dead. Mexico is mine. My people are free, and it is all thanks to you, John. And to the people who laid down their lives. People like Luisa. Oh, yes. She, she was very brave, and she will be missed. Who was she again? Your peasant girl wife-to-be? Oh, yes, of course. She, she will have a day named after her. Laura's day. Luisa. What? Oh, yes, I, I knew Laura as well. Magnificent girl. Like riding a pompous bull it was, amigo. You never saw anything like it. Anyway, enough about sport. Let's get back to politics. I trust you will join us in riding on the capital. I'd love to, but with Williamson dead, my jailers need me back in Blackwater. Hey, que hacen? Levanten, sing. Well, I must say, I'll miss you, John Marston. I doubt you'll even remember me, Abraham, but it's been an experience. Good luck with the revolution. If you win power, remember why you wanted it. Mm. Well, travel safely, amigo. Come on.
Come here a minute, will you? Hello there, sir. You look like a man who can do an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Then looks can be deceiving, pal. Perfect. As honesty is, in my business, the worst policy. I work for our well-respected governor, Nate Johns. That makes sense. Now, there is a certain individual spreading nasty rumors about Mr. Johns. I'd like you to put a stop to this vile gossip and malingering. Suppose I can handle that? For the right price? Now, this individual has had the misfortune to be photographed enjoying some rather inappropriate company. Been seen with a local whore. Take these photographs to him. After you take care of business, return to me and I'll pay up the reward for your services. You're doing great things for your state, dear friend. You should be proud. Sorry, I gotta go. Boss don't enforce himself. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Some mudsill just stole my horse. Pony up and stop him. Go.
Since I got you now. Ain't no other way, Slow madam. Down, There's an easier way you can have me. I ain't expensive. Joseph Scranton spits in his food? One day I'll have my own place. Maybe over in that tall tree.
Don't say I said this. Come on, friends. To raise his prices again. Man, that's twice this year already. One oh one, one oh two, one oh three, one oh five, one oh, one oh. I'm here to see Mr. Ross. One oh seven, one oh nine. Edgar Ross. One thirteen, upstairs on the right. One fourteen. One fifteen, one sixteen, one seventeen. Mr. Marston, so glad to see you. How was your journey? Where's my wife and son? Being well looked after. Well looked after. I want to see him. Mr. Ross wants to speak with you. We've had some. Important developments. You want me to take out a gun and blow a fucking hole in your head right here? <clears throat> right now? You want that? Mr. Marston. You want that? Mr. Marston, I ask you to calm down. Why? Why? I did what you asked. I got you Williamson and Escuela. It's over. Stop playing games with me. <laughs> no one's playing games with you, Mr. Marston. But if we were to play some games, there'd be some interesting ones we could play. Think, sir? Like hanging you for murder, or confiscating all of your property, like that little farm of yours, or, or having you put in an electric chair. Those are the sort of games we could play. But we choose to play a different game. So calm down and play along with us. Where's my wife? <laughs> you know, I forget. But I hear it's very nice this time of year. <sighs> Mr. Marston, please. I've never insulted your meager intelligence. Do not insult mine. We've done this little deal for your freedom in exchange for all your men from your old gang. You gave us Williamson and Escuela. We still don't have Vanderlyn, but now we know where he is. Then go and shoot him. No, sir. I want you to shoot him for me. And then I'll let you be. The last thing I want to do is make martyrs out of all these people. He could be killed by some petty squabble by another lowlife. We believe Vanderlyn just holed up with a group of renegades near the wreck of the Serendipity Riverboat. Ah, <sighs> yes. Another group of renegades. Obviously, the first group, your group, has, well, shall we say, been disbanded? <laughs> disbanded. Anyway, Mr. Ford and Mr. Marston, shall we go? Oh, Mr. Marston, your wife and son are, are doing well. Let's both try to ensure things stay that way. Okay. After you, sir. Oh, Mr. Marston, one more thing. This is for you. You're too kind. See, I have nothing but your best interest at heart. Let's hope it doesn't go off by mistake. 343. I, I have a patent for that, sir. This is an outrage. Oh, Mr. Marston. <laughs> You're alive. Hello, Wes Dickens. <laughs> Thought you were headed to Peking. Um, so did I. So did I. A long story. But now it seems I'm being put under arrest and charged with narcotic possession or some other such nonsense. Ross, have him release this man. Why? Because he's a harmless old fraud, the kind of man that built this country. And because he helped me get Williamson. Did you hear that, officer? The man's a hero. Let him go. Come on, Marston. Moral degeneracy waits for no man. Let's hurry along. 344. 
48, 3, That's it! You're all out for last chances! All right, Mr. Fordham, onward! Isn't this something? Lawmakers and lawbreakers working together for the good of civilization. Like you always say, sir, the higher the stakes, the smarter you have to play the game. I can't imagine I ever said anything quite so trite, in any case. I'm not sure Mr. Marston would agree with us. Unfortunately, Mr. Marston isn't broad-minded enough to appreciate the unique opportunity we're offering him. Son of a whore. You best watch your damn mouth! And it's strange you should say that, Mr. Marston, because according to my files, you are the whore's son. Now, what else can I recall from the files? Well, let's see. You killed hundreds of innocent people. You've robbed at least 40 banks that we're aware of. They told us there was a prize when you got to 50. I'm glad this is all such a joke to you. I want my family. And I'm sure all the men you murdered wanted their families, too. Come now. You're stupid. But you're not that stupid. We both know how this has to be. And it could be all over today. As soon as we find Dutch Vanderlyn, you can go back home and play being a farmer again, or whatever else you've been pretending to do for the last few years. First it was Bill, now it's Dutch. After Dutch, it'll be somebody else. Where does it end? It ends when we say it ends. You're in no position to make demands. Like you will. You don't just walk away from that. Buy a few chickens and make it all disappear. You should be dead or rotting in a jail cell by now. We are giving you a chance at new life. A chance at redemption. You can't erase your past, Mr. Marston. But we can. She's running well, sir. Such an elegant way to travel. What do you think of this automobile, Mr. Marston? Slow, but so convenient and reliable. Are you comfortable? No. You see this, Mr. Fordham? The brooding cowboy. There aren't many of these left, you know. A bit of a cliche, admittedly, but still a dying breed, like the buffalo. Just as dumb, but not quite as noble. They move most cows by rail these days, I hear. Not where I'm from, they don't. But you aren't from anywhere. A new dawn is breaking, Mr. Marston. This is the age of the machine. And soon, we'll all be living on the moon. Maybe. This is the future. Anything is possible. Finally, this godforsaken land is entering the 20th century. Prosperity has arrived. In the form of assholes like you. It's not far now. The old serendipity wreck has been used as an occasional criminal hideout for years. We were informed that Vanderlyn and his gang are making camp there. We'll stop on the cliff above, and you and Agent Fordham will go on foot. I'll stay with the vehicle and keep watch. Then you'll do as I say, Marston. Don't try anything stupid. Oh, I think he knows what's at stake. Don't you, Mr. Marston? Let's find Dutch and finish this. Come on then, Marston. You're with me. Quiet and stay close. Yes, sir. Vanderlind is the priority. We go in, take him down, get the hell out of here. Quick and clean. You leave Dutch to me. We don't want you getting that suit dirty. If you step out of line, even once, well, I hope you're aware of the consequences. Seems real quiet, don't you think? You tell me. Maybe Dutch caught wind of things. That informant better not have been lying to us. Keep your eyes open. They are open. I don't see nothing. It doesn't feel right. This place is usually teeming with lowlifes. There's someone up there. 
You go investigate. I'll keep watch here. God, that's her informant. Gnosis, what the hell's going on here? It's a trap. Shit, Marston, you'll have to carry this man. I don't think you can walk. What the hell's happening Bastard! here? Bastard! We need to clear a path out of here. It's a miracle you fools aren't dead already! I thought we were friends! The army is on its way! Now let's go! We need to get the hell off this boat! In God's name is going on. Marston, lift this fellow into the back seat. Put him in the car so we can get out of here. Let's go. There might be more of them. down there it was a trap they were waiting for us and who is this savage a prisoner this is the informant sir do you speak english uh, uh yes he does sir he's the informant nostis don't get snarky with me fordham we found him tied up on the boat then they jumped us nice of you to help us out hell of a plan sending in two men to take on an entire gang of outlaws especially when one of them's an office clerk or Social secretary or some Just such. shut your mouth!
Come on, not now. What's wrong? I don't know. The motor just gave out. Well, fix it, you fool. We need to get this man to a doctor. Of course, sir. It's Dutch's men. Marston, we'll hold them off. Hold them, we'll fix that damn engine. I can't see any more of them. Fordham, are we ready? Yes, sir, I think so. Come on, let's get back to Blackwater. Damn, that was close. We're lucky to be alive. I'm beginning to see why Mr. Marston here has made it to such a ripe old age. You make me blush with all these kind words. So much for this automobile of yours. If this is the future, God help us all. It's not the automobile. Bad workmen shouldn't blame his tools. Perhaps if Mr. Fordham maneuvered it with a little more finesse... I was trying to escape an ambush, sir. Even if it was running fine, they'd still have caught us. I can walk faster than this piece of crap. Give me a horse any day. So what now? Do I get to see my family? Where is Dutch Vanderlyn? I don't know. In that case, old boy, no, you don't get to see your family. It's a fairly simple agreement, Mr. Marston, even for a man as devoid of intellect as yourself. If you'd like me to explain it to you again, I'd be more than willing. No, you've said enough. We'll find Vanderlyn soon enough. For now, however, I suggest we call it a day. So how does it feel? Taking a man's wife and child from him. Does it make you feel good? How does it feel to kill hundreds of men in cold blood? You're a coward. You're a murderer. Actions have consequences, Mr. Marston. Come now. Try to look on the bright side. The bright side? There ain't no bright side. Your family is enjoying a much-needed vacation, and in far more luxurious surroundings than those to which they are accustomed, I assure you. Soon you will be able to start a new life together, absolved of all your sins. We should take the Indian to Professor McDougal, see what he can get out of it. Good idea, sir. I just can't communicate with them. Here we are. Thank God for that. So, this is the office of an anthropologist named McDougal. He was thrown out of Yale for a degeneracy. We should tell you something. Indeed, but he's been helping us deal with the natives in this area. They see him and they presume we're all idiot academics. Huh? Give me a hand here, Marston. Ah, Mr. Ross. Uh, Mr. Fordham? G good day. G good day. What on earth's going on here? Kid got shot in the leg. <sighs> Beat up pretty good. We'll send a doctor. Now, McDougal. Mm -hmm. <sighs> we need information from this fellow about Dutch Vanderland. Can you see what you can find out for us? Do my best, sir. Make sure you do. <laughs> Professor McDougal has been a good friend of the U.S. government, Mr. Marston, just like you. Why don't you see if you can help him in his study of the native problem in this county? That's a good thought. Someone told me that the town idiot is going and learn 
to read. <laughs>